Hey guys, this is Accounting Nightmare, and welcome back to our Devil May Cry 2 Secret Room Adventures. I'm gonna do that actually. Very hard to pain. Jesus. Nearly got it. Nearly got it. Please, please drop a whole shitload of health for me. It didn't drop anything. I'm so screwed. <laughs> Jesus. What nutcase came up with this? Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, what nutcase came up with this? Oh, desperation. I didn't even do very much. <laughs> wow. Ugh. What Capcom should have done up in, at this point right now, even at 2012, 2013, 2010, I don't care. You should have never did DMC. That's just plain and simple. Not It's not about who worked on the game. You could have picked anybody, any other company to work on this game. The whole simple fact that DMC even exists was a, already a major mistake. And that's what fans are complaining about. We're not complaining about the hair. We're not complaining about the cigarettes. We're not even complaining about the fact that this dude got a bowl cut. I'm surprised nobody says that. Yes, Dante has a bowl cut. He literally, somebody put a bowl on his head, shaved the sides of his head, and just said, there you go. That's stupid. That's an ugly design. I mean, just ridiculous designs all the way around. When it comes to the Dante and Virgil, they look like total crap. They really do. There's no getting around it. There might be some people who like that, but guess what? Those are kids. And if you're going to, you know, direct this game for kids, you should have not gave this game an M rating. Because, to be perfectly honest, these kids are teenagers, and these teenagers shouldn't be playing this game, especially with the whole spec, the whole, excuse me, the whole simple fact that, um... Mundus is, is beating cakes in this game. You know? And for people who don't understand that, that terminology, he's having sex. Why is anyone having sex in Devil May Cry? What is the purpose of it all? What does it help? How is this helping the story? It does absolutely nothing. I remember there was a game that brought... I've never played Dante's Inferno. I did watch it, like a 45-minute clip of some gameplay of it. And um, I fell asleep through it. <laughs> it was uh, the part where um, it was all, it's all—it's kind of like the chambers of hell. And every time he would go through it, there's a, a lady that would sit there and say, "Oh, this is despair. Oh, this is the chamber of the liars," and blah 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 blah. And then he had to—he um, had to meet certain requirements to defeat certain enemies. And I, I remember somebody kept saying. Oh, well, nobody complained about the demon that literally took a shit on your chest if you let him. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and that's the only reason why I wanted to look at Dante. I was like, man, you lying. Let me see this. I never found it. Don't want to find it. Whatever. All I can say is when it comes to this, this whole DMC thing, this is what everybody stated from 2003 all the way up till now. We shouldn't have never even worried about Devil May Cry 5 at this point. We cannot let you sit here and pretend like Devil May Cry 2 was so bad that you got to ignore it. You're pretty much saying that to save, pretty much to save face. If you're going to make a decision like that, you need to own up to it. Sit there and say, no man, I put mad work into this game. You might not like the direction of it, but it's still a good game. Look at all the reviews. Everybody's been giving this game a B. And guess what? Up until this point, that game has almost sold 2 million copies. 2 million copies. Yes, I'm getting that from V-Charts. But, hey. 
two million copies or almost two million copies that is a lot of units sold regardless of how bad it is will DMC sell that amount within 10 years I doubt it I doubt it they'll be lucky to even break 600 they'll really be lucky to even break 600 and most of that is going to be to people who have no idea what Devil May Cry is supposed to be about they have no they're not even used to the franchise they never even seen the anime they ain't they know absolutely nothing about it those are the people that's gonna buy it and um another thing that I've noticed is I'm not I'm probably be speaking too soon on this I haven't seen a commercial yet and this game is about to come out in January ironically Devil May Cry 2 came out in January of 2003 10 years later so you had 10 years to learn from your mistakes did you do it Capcom no you did not this is not Ninja Theory's problem this really isn't that's what a lot of fans gonna understand this isn't Ninja Theory's problem this is Capcom's problem this is what they wanted this is what they wanted and the thing about I don't know if this is more of a culture thing but when they make a decision they stick to it whether it's really bad or really not but you can't really say that because look at what happened with Mega Man was Mega Man a bad decision never it hasn't been a bad decision since it started I would probably debate that there was a lot of versions of Mega Man that they shouldn't have made the only really other alternate version that I person this is just me just my opinion not a fact the only one that I really welcomed was Mega Man X. Anything outside of classic Mega Man and Mega Man X, I think that was excessive. Other than that, I won't go as to saying you guys are wrong for liking that type of Mega Man. If that's your Mega Man, that's your Mega Man. The only thing I can say is X, I loved it. Mega Man X 4 and 5 are my favorite. Absolute favorites. Especially due to the fact that they had the uh, cinematics. That <laughs> yes, loved it. Those those are great ideas. Those that's stuff that they should have kept doing instead of making games like Mega Man X Six. That game was bad. I wanted my money back. <laughs> Did I ever get it? No. I think I just lost the disc. I don't know what happened to it. Can't even trade that in. But um, the only thing I can sit there and say is. What you really should have did, Capcom, is you should have did a remake of Devil May Cry 2. Not a reboot, a remake. You should have kept all the things that were done right, took all the stuff that the fans have pretty much loved from Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition and Devil May Cry 4, and expanded upon it. And then kept in mind of what the guy, I forget who stated it, but pretty much gave us what Devil May Cry 2 was supposed to be. Devil May Cry 2 is before Devil May Cry 4. So Devil May Cry 2 better be better than Devil May Cry 4. Which won't be too hard because Devil May Cry 4 wasn't even that great of a game either. The only reason why people play Devil May Cry 4 is for one reason. It's the same reasons why they play. people still play Devil May Cry 3. A second character and the combat system. Nobody plays this game for the story. Nobody plays this game for the levels. Nobody play, play this game for anything else. Maybe difficulty. Maybe difficulty. And in my opinion, those games aren't that hard. They're hard. They're not, you know, uh, NG um, Black or whatever you want to Sigma, whatever the games you compare, you compare from those Ninja games, uh, what Team Ninja did were hard. I give you all that. I give you all that. But I have the same complaint for those games that I have for this game. You know what I'm saying? Some of those stuff was hard, but they were hard for all the wrong reasons. A lot of it was just platforming and weird, retarded stuff. I, and I didn't like the whole fact that we had to play the game backwards. That was a... Man, that was just bad. That was bad. That really was. But Nero was great. Loved him. Being able to play as Virgil. Great. That's awesome. But where the fuck is Virgil? Okay. Where is he? Why was he even involved, semi-involved with with this guy? Is that Nero just a, a reincarnation? What? Nobody really explained that. They may have and I just missed it. But most of it, no. No. 
But all y'all really should have did was took Devil May Cry 2, kept everything that worked. Keep the new, uh, keep Dante's look. That worked. Keep Lucia. That worked. Keep Trish. That worked. What you can add to that, which everybody complained that Devil May Cry 4 didn't do. Okay, if old girl has been around since Devil May Cry 3, why isn't she playable in Devil May Cry 4? Okay, then. This is what we're going to do. We're going to put Lady in the, the remake of Devil May Cry 2. That would have been great. That would have been great. What we're going to do is we're going to keep a lot of the ideas like uh, the attribute, we, uh, you know, the, the amulet. We're going to keep that. The only thing we're going to do is instead of, a am, you know, instead of the devil arms, like you literally have to get it, we're going to keep the, it goes into the amulet. Because this is going to be something that has never been done in the Devil May Cry game. What's never been done is the ability to keep them. To keep those abilities. He never keeps them. Every game he has something different. He never keeps the same weapon. And, and that's what I hated the fact that a freak wasn't in the next game. I was like, what the fuck? Why is this in here? And then go to the next game. Um, I can understand the prequel not having it. <laughs> I get that. But what about everything else? So if we're not going to have the devil arms... You're going to have to really do something with that devil trigger. The only thing you can really do with the devil trigger is now incorporate, go back to Devil May Cry 1 had. You were the bet, you had to buy moves. Go back to buying moves. Dumb down the power of the damn guns. That's why a lot of people sat there and said, oh man, I could just go through the game and shoot the gun. That was a style. A lot of people didn't know that. That's the style of the game. You could either just shoot the uh, shoot the enemies and not really fight them too much, and just just shoot and dodge, shoot and dodge, or you can swing and and, and it just go, you know, balls out, just go in their face and just keep battling. That was the way to play in the game. You could not do that in Devil May Cry One. If you just sat around trying to shoot all day, a bloody puppet or 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 especially Shadow Cat, they're gonna get in your ass. You're gonna have to play a certain way. Shadow Cat, that was the whole point of shooting. You had that's the only way you could beat him. You try to punch him or kick him, he going to fuck you up. <laughs> you can't do that. Now if they had character specific um ways of beating them, that makes sense. A lot of that was not used in Devil May Cry 2. You need to get back to that. And get back to doing that. There was no easy mode. The only reason why Devil May Cry 1 had an easy mode because it was too hard. Let's just be real. Uh, Kamiya knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. That's why he did it. And I'm not going to front. When I played Devil May Cry the very first time, the first level was... Well, no, it wasn't the first level. It was the second level. was kicking my ass. And um, I accidentally learned the, uh, the secret mission one. That's where I kept dying. And I... I was seeing it was a secret mission, so I was like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this. I'm going to beat... No, no, no. I didn't know how to approach that situation. <laughs> and I kept getting my, my my ass handed to me. These motherfuckers was getting me. And then a lot of people was like, oh, man, that's the only reason why he was hard, because you couldn't see. No, that was the part that made the game... I was like, that's what made the game intense. You couldn't see where he was coming from. I was like, oh, shit, where are they coming from? And then try to play that same mission. On Dante Must Die mode, forget about it. You're going to get raped. That's the only way I can describe it. If you don't know what you're doing, and you're not used to fighting that, 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 oh man, Shadow Cat is just a shit. That's my favorite motherfucking enemy. <laughs> out, of, out of the entire franchise. Shadow Cat. Mother, I, I, I love him because I hate him. Them motherfuckers are just bad. Three of them? Imagine trying to fight six of those. Man. You, you better have royal guard <laughs> you gotta have something but um uh back to the difficulty difficulty does exist in devil may cry 2 the only problem is you don't get it right away and i that's part of why the game didn't succeed well i will state that the difficulty was dumbed down it did not need to be dumbed down it should not have been dumbed down um if you 
could just look past all the other opinions that you're going based off of and just actually play the game, I think it may be a little bit too late to get people to really enjoy the game now. Because everybody that's played, that's going to play this game, they're still going to compare it to Devil May Cry 3 and 4. And most people can never see past that. Those people, you might as well not even be watching this video because you're, you're never going to look at this game for what it really was. The only reason why this game is bad is because it's not Devil May Cry 1. Li people literally wanted Devil May Cry 1.5. They did not want Devil May Cry 2 as it is now. They literally wanted Devil May Cry 1.5 or a properly made sequel. It had to be one of those two. We didn't get that. Devil May Cry 3, we still didn't get that. We, we got a game that had a really crazy... Uh, combat system with an extra character. That's pretty much what we got. We still didn't get Devil May Cry uh, 1.5. Still didn't get it. Here comes Devil May Cry 4. We still didn't get it. All we got was technically Devil May Cry 3.5. If you really look at it, it's the same damn game. The only thing Devil May Cry really brought to the table, instead of being forced to use only one style, you could switch styles on the fly which made Dante even more insane but once again you only expanded upon one really major aspect which is the reason why Devil May Cry 3 sold was the combat system Devil May Cry wasn't supposed to be about the combat system it was more about it was supposed to be like an adventure and like you're going through some crazy situations and Dante's excited to go through it if you um, ever played Devil May Cry 1 and you um, kept pressing X and re would read what some of the stuff Dante would say, he loved the fact that stuff was creepy. He loved that. And he was just like, oh, that's, that's, some, that's a trip. And it's like, I like this shit, though. <laughs> He's pretty much going like that. But we're not getting that, especially with DMC. We're not getting that. Now we're getting a completely different game. This is not even Devil May Cry 2 levels. That's a completely different game. Only thing it is, it is Dante name only. It's Dino. A lot of people say Dante, I say Dino. We I've been saying Dino since 2010. Or Dante. I don't like Dante. That that sounds stupid. It might look good on the screen, but man, no. Stop. Just stop. It's it's purely Dino, man. It's Dante and name only. There's no Devil May Cry in this game it is there's nothing about it it's kind of like the best comparison I, I when I look at the DMC the only thing that comes to mind is the um, the live motion picture version of Super Mario Brothers that's exactly what I think of when I look at DMC it's the same thing okay you got one Italian dude then you got a Hispanic dude wait a minute I thought they were both Italian <laughs> <laughs> it's just everything is wrong everything is wrong everything is wrong everything is wrong everything and and we can't sit there and go with like with Street Fighter the movie the only reason why that game I mean that movie was great is because it was bad <laughs> it was a it wasn't a, like overall a bad movie it was a B movie it was a movie you should never take serious, but since it had the, the Street Fighter tag on it, we wanted to take it seriously. And unfortunately, we should not have. Everything was wrong about that movie, and, but everything was right because it was wrong. <laughs> now, when it comes to DMC, nah, man. This game's just wrong. There's nothing good about it. There's nothing redeeming about it. There has been some new releases of uh, pictures for the enemies. Those are okay. They're still okay. And that's the problem with DMC. It's a mediocre game. People will have the same opinion about Devil May Cry 2. And I agree. I agree. When it comes to the franchise, Devil May Cry 2 was a mediocre game. Was it a bad game? That's what's more important. That's the opinion that really counts. Was it a bad game? People don't understand what bad game means. And this is where I have to break it down to a point uh, scale. A point scale of 1 through 10. What is the level of Devil May Cry 2? 
Most people will give this game between 7 and 7.5. Even on the reviews that I've seen, I've seen B minus, I've seen B plus, I've seen the 7s. Ooh, excuse me. I've seen the 7.0s. I've seen the 7.5s. That's not a bad game. That's a solid game. You know, people say that about Catherine. In my opinion, Catherine is not a solid game. That's a great game. That game is an 8.5 on my scale. That was like, to this day, I still play Catherine. This is, I feel like this is the map that anybody could win for sure. Because once you get in the lead, it's so hard to come back. I don't know what Bobby's doing. Bobby's kind of taking the long way around. He's and ruining his own side. No, but that was good because it kept T-Lock from going to the better side. Mm. And then he takes the advantage and he keeps it and he oh, knocks him down. Knocks him down. He should just take Wait. the advantage now. He should just go. He should use the dark block to the left. There it is. But he's still dead, I think. No, he can do this. I think he can still do this. Can he figure it out? Can he, he, he figure can it out? Right. And uh, this is gonna wait! Oh, oh, my oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! T lock! T lock! Why did the blue cat just keep moving? How did you get so clutch? Oh my goodness! Oh, okay, Koopa down okay. there getting raped. Wait, where's he gonna go with this? Oh, very, very slick. One is securing his lead, but wait, Koopa has X Factor! Whoa, X and he was a contender with X Factor! Level three! Whoa! Oh, oh, lock on it. Oh, oh, oh! The turnaround! My god! That shit's fucking strategic right there! We're taking Clock Tower now. This is the stage that Bond bodied me for no reason. <laughs> I like this stage, actually. This, we'll stage, this stage has a lot of strategy to we'll it. We'll see how Bond does it this time. They're both doing the exact same fucking thing so far. Oh, okay, Koopa changes Koopa it takes up. takes an advantage. Steal that block. Oh, everything's very, blowing very dangerous, up. Very dangerous. The option select blows up on, Looks and he's like going to have a lot of this. difficulty now, but he's very wisely just gives up on that and goes to a completely different part of the map, and he's right back in it now. What a smart little motherfucker. Very, very smart. Very talented play right there. Good option block, select though. by he's Koopa. He's got a block, so things will work out. There he goes. Oh, 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 we tried oh, to make the reversal, bad. but Koopa did not for fall for it. This is bad for Bond. This is really bad for Bond. No options. Bond has to make this work really fast. Everything explodes. Koopa he's gonna gives him a setup. He has Koopa a way up. He has a way up. He has gotta hurry. He's got to hurry. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Is this he pulls it back. Again? He takes the lead. Oh, Koopa bodies him. He's going to time it out. He's going to time it out for sure. But watch Koopa's for the got reversal. This. Oh, he gave him four watch, spots. Watch for the watch for the reversal. Be careful. Oh, Koopa's no being reversal. so careful. Very oh, smart play oh. by Koopa. He watches for the reversal. No he more X factor. It. He keeps option selecting it. He and the bombs the are going. Oh! He runs away. Oh! Bowie bomb! Sure, you can! That's so sick. I just wish people would have more tournaments in Catherine. I, I see you, uh, Finest KO. I see y'all guys having your tournaments. I wish you guys right, could get that, go. get more exposure on that. And I'm, uh, and I'm hoping that I can get somebody to do that in my city. I, people are too, le uh, too lazy in Omaha, so I don't, I don't know if I can do that. I can try. <laughs> I can try. I can probably get some new people to want to play the game. But Catherine is the shit. It really is. And a lot, a lot of people gotta stop sleeping on Catherine. And Catherine, yes, the two-player mode, that is tournament worthy. People really need to keep playing that game. And I hope Atlas uh, comes up with some ideas for that. I'll probably make another video for that when, um, when I get more information. I'm going to wait on stuff like that. But, yeah, Catherine's the shit. It really is. But Devil May Cry 2 wasn't a shitty game. It was just a shitty Devil May Cry game. Here comes 10 years later, DMC. DMC is an even shittier game, and this is why. People didn't like Devil May Cry 2 because it wasn't Devil May Cry 1. People don't really like Devil May Cry, the, D the new DMC, because it's not Devil May Cry at all. You've already failed. There's no, there's no really, uh, uh, reason for me to go any further. It's not Devil May Cry at all. You, it's only Devil May Cry in name. It's only Dante in name. It's only Virgil in name. It's only in Mundus in name. That's it. Why the hell am I seeing pictures of your version of Dante in his in black briefs, helping his little brother up, Virgil, from the ground? When I could have swore somebody kept saying that Virgil was more in touch with his demon side than Dante was. And I don't think they, they probably sparred, but not like that. 
And when I'm looking at that picture, I'm like, that's a total ripoff of Street Fighter Alpha with um, Ken letting up Ryu. But they reversed it. <laughs> so I'm like, come on, man. And that's the other reason why DMC will never really be a Devil May Cry game is because you have no identity. You have no identity. All you're pretty much doing is you're constantly taking shit from other games and then you're not really doing it properly. If you could take stuff from other stuff and then made it better, no one would complain. The only people you'll have people like um, Angry Joe pretty much using you in, as um, as an example for his descriptions. And that's one thing that I do not like about Angry Joe. He's a cool dude. Funny dude. Really, He really is. But man, he should he should really stop talking about action games. Hmm. What's the big deal with Bayonetta? Can somebody please explain to me why I should care about some librarian hitting people with her high heels? Alright, alright, so it's got its own little story, its own unique art style, it, you know, it still reminds me of, uh, you know, games like Devil May Cry, it, you know, she's like Dante, but like, with way better tits. But, now it's time to get down to business. From the various previews that I looked up and the articles that I read, for Bayonetta, I'm sitting at a preview score of about four. These types of games have never been at the top of my list. You know, these Devil May Cries or, you know, the God of Wars. I just feel that those games, you run through it once. There's not a whole lot of reason to replay it. And there's a lot of shit going on screen there. You got that kind of JRPG look to it, and I really can't see what's going on sometimes. Some of it has a real unique art style to it, which I think is cool. I just don't know if it'll be enough to make, for me, uh, a $60 retail game. Now let me explain the rating system, okay? Uh, you're gonna start at 5, okay? You're neutral at 5. 10 means you're obsessed with the game. Every waking moment consumes your life. You just want to taste the sweet nectar of that game when it releases. That That's a 10, okay? And a 1 is an abomination of gaming. Anybody that buys that, you excommunicate, you never talk to that person again. In fact, you <laughs> Now I want to hear from you guys. You know, are you in the camp that you think that this is going to be an excellent game? One of the more unique titles out there in this kind of genre? Perhaps better than Devil May Cry? Or do you think that they're actually just kind of exploiting her, you know, showing off all this nakedness because they're trying to make up for uh, some of the lackluster features in the game. You guys let me know what you think. Lollipop Chainsaw is so stupid. Like, really stupid. Why the hell would I play a game where a blonde cheerleader sucks on lollipops all day long and kills zombies? Well, because it's freaking awesome? This is so stupid, it's fun. However, I was only convinced after playing. I'm not your typical fan of, hey, Mickey, you're so fine, and the sort of hipster cult pop culture stuff. But damn it, this game started to pull me in. 
this is my first Suda game and all the nonsensical, campy, batshit crazy stuff that I heard about paid off. How a game like this became way more interesting to a person like me is a testament to its inventiveness. On the gameplay side, the game does take a little bit of time to ramp up. The first impression isn't so good. It surprised me with how extremely linear the level design is. I couldn't even jump over cars, for Christ's sake. Combat felt stiff, and Juliet would freeze up when switching from her pom-pom attack animation to her zombie-killing chainsaw attack. There wasn't much variation early on, but I stuck with it. And right around the second level, when you start upgrading Juliet's attacks through online shopping booths that unlock new abilities, music, and sexy outfits. enjoying myself the rest of the way. Now, Lollipop Chainsaw is strictly a score attack game that is a third-person hack and slasher. So know that going in. I got flashbacks of playing Crazy Taxi while rescuing my classmates. And after seeing that I'll be doing battle with five Dark Purveyor bosses, I saw similarities with the vivid style of Scott Pilgrim with each boss having its own abilities and, and theme. Now, as soon as I realized these things, I had to switch my mindset from an action game or adventure game like, like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry to an old Sega arcade beat-em-up. Now, when looking at the game like that, your experience will improve tremendously. If you enjoy games like Vanquish or Gungrave, and you don't mind it being a little bit slower and more score attack oriented, you're gonna love Lollipop Chainsaw. And as this type of game, it's meant to be played over and over, improving your score each time. But unless you're into that sort of thing, you're probably gonna be ready to move on to another game after you're done with the initial playthrough. It's the game's story, style, and visual flair that is the delicious, sweet, gooey center, rather than the combat or the mini-game. And at a very short five to six hours, it's hard for me to make that recommendation. The final verdict for Lollipop Chainsaw is a very solid six out of ten. The game is like one of those fancy little delectable delicious cupcakes. It's small, it doesn't last very long, but it is rich and sweet as hell. And it's also overpriced for what it is. Now had the game have been priced at something like $40, it would have made a lot more sense for me to make that recommendation to indulge our sweet tooths. Trust me, it converted me into a Suda fan. It'll convert you too. In fact, I want to go back and play some of his previous games that I heard are longer, more substantial, and arguably better. So, Dragon's Dogma. It's kind of hard to describe, so let me show you. So picture this. You take The Elder Scrolls, Shadow of Colossus, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, and even a bit of Dark Souls, put it in a pot and mix it all together, and you're gonna get a brand new RPG. And guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get Dragon's Dogma. That's right, Dragon's Dogma. Pretty cool, right? Dogma has also brought the Devil May Cry style action-oriented combat that's fast and fluid, and makes this combat arguably better than its competitors, but, there are just so many basic RPG 101 things that were missed here, probably lost in translation or due to the developer's inexperience with Western type RPGs. Now some of these can be fixed in patches, but others are probably gonna require a sequel. If Capcom would include fast travel and patch the pawns 
they would increase the fun factor by 10. They would hide the respawn deficiencies over long treks and reduce the monotony in this game tremendously. But as it stands now, Dragon's Dogma is a very solid 7 out of 10. I'm being generous here because I really, really wanted to love Dragon's Dogma. I wanted to issue it a badass seal of approval. Unfortunately, it's too difficult to make that type of assure you recommendation.